The hippie movement first started in the mid-1960s by young people across the United States and began to spread throughout other countries, including England. Hippies' values had a major impact on culture, music, television, film, literature, art, and architecture. Cedric Price was a well-known architect of the Hippies in the City movement. He was born on September 11, 1934 in Stone, Stafford. He studied architecture at Cambridge University and Architectural Association School of Architecture in London. After teaching part-time for a few years, he opened up his own practice in 1960. One of his most well-known projects is the Fun Palace. Although never built, its concepts have left a long-lasting impression on the world of architecture. Price believed that the building should function with the people. Through the correct use of new technology, the public could have complete control over the environment, which would result in a building that could be responsive to the visitors' needs and wants. The design was meant to accommodate the different functions of the current audience. The Fun Palace originated from Price's ideas along with a theater director by the name of Joan Littlewood. For example, there would be spaces that could transform from music and dance, along with painting, drama, and even fireworks. The main idea of the building was to have a constant connection with the user, whether it was for using the spaces or just viewing the action from any location they desired. The Fun Palace was a time-based urban intervention with flexible or adaptable programs that invited the user's participation. The user was always urged to participate, they would never get bored. For research for the building, Price created a system of charts and tables of his studies in London since the building was meant to be built there. His studies consisted of everything from the relationship of activities and the spaces they require to an analysis, analysis of his own decision-making and design process. These studies led Price to the initial ideas and designs. The Fun Palace was designed around an unenclosed steel structure fully serviced by traveling cranes. The only stationary pieces of the building were the towers which were steel lattice columns and the beams. The columns or service towers not only symbolically anchored the project, but physically anchored the building as well. Contained within them were service and emergency stairs, elevators, plumbing, and electrical connections. There were also public circulation stairs and escalators to move around from space to space within the building. All of the other components such as prefabricated walls, platforms, floors, stairs, and ceiling modules could be moved and assembled by the cranes to the liking of the user. The elements that could incorporate into the program were hanging theaters, activity spaces, cinema screens, and speakers. All of these things were also movable or composed of prefabricated modular units that could be quickly assembled and taken apart whenever needed. Some of the program these units would be used for were restaurants, workshops, rally areas, theaters, and cinemas. The Fun Palace was described as a resemblance to a large shipyard in which enclosed within them would be programs that could be rearranged and scrapped continuously. The cranes would tower above the building to move the pieces into its new place. One of the terms used to describe the Fun Palace was a laboratory of fun. Cedric Price's revolutionary design and way of thinking has ranked him among many other well-known architects such as Will Alsop, Archigram, Arata Izaki, Rem Koolhaas, and Bernard Tashumi. His ideology of forming to the needs and wants of the user has influenced other architects. One well-known example is the Centre Georges Pompidou designed by Richard Rogers and Renzo Piano. Some of the aspects of the Pompidou that reflect Price's ideas are the free-flowing plan and massive structure. The jabarets are the main structural aspect that provides tensile strength for long spans. The long span steel structure allows the floors of the building to have no obstructions throughout the entire plan. This creates the opportunities for movable walls and changes in program. Although there is designated program zones, the walls and specific functions of the spaces change. The areas of the building where the main structure of the jabarets is located is where the circulation and the utilities are also placed much like that of the Fun Palace.